Muscle cars have been relevant in pop culture for decades. Countless movies, TV shows, and video games have all portrayed muscle cars as king of the road. And because of this, most guys have a dream of buying an old muscle car, fixing it up, and driving it around. But when you finally achieve this, what is the reality of owning one of these classics? Be sure to hit like and subscribe, and without further ado, these are the things I hate about owning a classic muscle car. The first thing I hate about classic muscle cars is that they're carbureted. I got a love-hate relationship with carbs. I love when they're working, and I hate when they're not working. So yeah, to no one's surprise, classic cars are gonna have a carburetor. And like I said, I got mixed feelings on them. Let me explain a little further because there are some positives to having a carb over fuel injection. For example, I'm not the smartest person when it comes to computers, so being able to adjust my air fuel ratio and idle with just a screwdriver, that's nice. And not having any sensors that can go out is great. But then there's the annoying stuff, like trying to start it sometimes. Because carbureted engines take a little bit to get started. You gotta pump the pedal, but not too much or you'll flood it. And if you haven't started it in a few months, you gotta help it along with some starting fluid. Now that's just the kind of annoying stuff that you'll eventually get used to. The thing that's always bothered me though is all the maintenance you gotta do on them. Like what I'm doing right here, replacing my accelerator pump. For those of you who don't know, the accelerator pump is the part of the carb that shoots a little bit more gas in when you floor it. And these little pumps like going out pretty often, so you'll get pretty good at this job. For the second thing I hate about owning a classic car, their terrible fuel economy. When these cars were made, gas cost 32 cents a gallon, and when adjusted for inflation, equals about $1.75 today. And when gas prices are that cheap, nobody's concerned about fuel economy, so the car companies didn't bother making them efficient. But with the current gas prices, driving these old cars can hurt your wallet for sure. And if you're like me and have a 3-speed automatic with 411 gears, your miles per gallon can easily be in the single digits going down the highway. The third thing I hate about classic muscle cars is that random stuff breaks on them all the time. Most recent example of this was my hood hinges. One of them broke and I was unable to close the hood for a while. The hood hinges alone are not really a big deal, but I'm not only referring to the hood hinges. These are 50-year-old cars, so there's gonna be a lot of little repairs that you gotta do time to time. And while it's easy to get excited about installing a new exhaust or intake, it's a lot harder to find motivation to go out and fix wiring on your front blinker. That's a real problem I haven't gotten to on this yet. My front blinkers still don't work. Usually I try to fix these problems as they come up because if you don't, they can really stack up. And next thing you know, your project car is worse than when you bought it. That's why about a year ago when I got rear-ended, I stopped working on all my other projects and solely focused on repairing this. And now I'm just glad that it's almost done. And the fourth thing I hate about classic muscle cars is that they're not the most reliable. I gotta take this thing down and get it washed and there's a car show I'm trying to go to, so I hope I don't break down. So because of the reasons I've previously mentioned, that makes these old cars pretty unreliable. I've had my GTO for over five years now, and in that time I've had to upgrade or replace several different parts on it, including my radiator, three starters, four batteries, intake gasket, oil pump, oil pan gasket, timing chain cover gasket, four accelerator pumps, a transmission rebuild, drive shaft bearings, brake master cylinder, and there's more than that, but you get the point. And a big reason for all this is that two of the five years I owned it, I was driving this car every day. It was my daily driver. And because of it being so old, a lot of parts broke on it and left me stranded multiple times. It wasn't until after I graduated and got a new daily that I realized I was doing the whole thing wrong. Because at this point, I was only driving the GTO on weekends and for special occasions like car meets and car shows. So it finally occurred to me that when you drive the car less, the chances of breaking down are reduced significantly. Let me phrase it like this, drive your classic car like you drive a speedboat. Because you don't drive a speedboat to work every day, but on special occasions like the weekends and the 4th of July. And while we all want to look like Steve McQueen when we go to Walmart, I started having way more fun driving it when I started using the boat rule as I call it. And since having fun was the uh, whole reason I got the car in the first place, it worked out perfect for me. 